Hi, I'm David Lasondak, author and senior structural integrator at the Center for Integrative Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm here with some friends to tell you more about structural integration. Now, according to this book, written by the founder, creator of structural integration, Ida Rolf, where the term Rolfing comes from, writes in page 15 that Structural integration is a system that induces change towards an ordered pattern. In general, it is a basic 10-hour cycle of treatment that balances myofascial relationships. But you know, with 212 or so moving parts connected by 647-odd myofascial units, it's exactly that simple and exactly that complex. All of the different types of structural integration are very similar in that they combine specific myofascial releases coupled with the client or patient's slow guided movements and then add additional movement re-education so that over a cycle of 10 or 12 treatments, structural integrators lead the body to more optimal alignment, posture, and fluid, graceful movement. Now you're going to see a really compelling case study, get some perspectives from other structural integrators. But first, we're going to see an overview of a 12 series session, as well as some before and after with structural integrator and author Thomas Myers. The 12 series works progressively through your body. There are four sessions that deal with the more superficial muscles, four sessions that deal with the core of your body, and then four sessions to make those two interact as a symphony, in other words, to integrate the movement uh, and make it more functional for you. This is a project with a beginning and a middle and an end. What can we do with our hands to suggest to him that he could be a little less flexed in his long thoracic curve? because the position that we see his shoulders in is very dependent on the rib cage. And if I were to take the rib cage and do something like this with it, and you, Nick, were to make the back of your neck long, no nope, longer, have the back of your head come up. Yeah, that's, don't strain quite so much. We don't want to see a double chin, just a little bit of length. Yep, lovely. But now you can see that that makes a real difference. His thoracic curve is uh, more normalized and you can see that the shoulders are going to sit quite comfortably if he's coming into me and complaining of his shoulders or his neck i say okay but that's not happening here that's not happening here that's happening here so there are three measures of the value of any given session one is what i observe <clears throat> and we just got a chance to look at that um, in the moments after the session that's one measure a more accurate measure would be to get him back here in a week and take the pictures again and see how much held during the week that he was gone. If this is learning to ride a bicycle, he should stay on the bicycle during the week that he's gone, not go back into the pattern that he was in. The third thing that's valuable is his subjective impression. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. I'm feeling a definite full breath now, mm -hmm. a deep, much deeper breath than I was at the beginning. Good. Um, and the Pain to my back or definitely lessen. Good. Okay. Well, those are both positive things. If he feels that the pain in his back is less, then maybe I can tease him to come along so that we can get in, like next time we'll be on the superficial back line, we'll be into all the muscles of the back for sure, as well as those muscles deep in the pelvis that are holding the pelvis forward and these muscles that are holding the rib cage down. So we're not trying to do the whole job in one session. There's an educational element to all this and that's where we have when when you're standing there and we say what's it feel like to shift your weight or take a step there's something about owning it owning that experience as you say that I can feel that I can feel that I have more weight on the outside and, and how you're going to apply that in the, the activities that you like to do. Bodies store tension stress traumas physical mental emotional all of those things 
take shape in the body. And what rolfers are addressing is the systemic impact that even pain in one area of the body has on other parts of the body. So it's the only system that I truly know of that works head to toe to organize the body, give it spaciousness in a three-dimensional way. Symptom relief requires that the entire body be addressed. We're looking at what each segment needs or where it needs to go. And through direct manipulation of the fascia with our hands and fists and forearms, we start creating length in those areas where the fascia is holding that tension. Hi, I'm Bernie Landles, board certified structural integration practitioner and author of Finding Their Feet, Every Parent's Guide to Milestones and Movement. In structural integration, we sometimes vary from the 10 or the 12 series for specific project work. This case report is an example of project-based work. Presented with a client who, from a severe accident, was needing some post-surgery treatment. The client suffered a trimalleolar fracture and dislocation to her ankle whilst playing field hockey, resulting in surgical intervention to repair and stabilise the joint. I began work three months post-surgery. She had been discharged by physiotherapy, deemed recovered and yet she could not run and she had other issues and pain and tensions in her body. I performed 12 sessions over 12 weeks with a follow-up five weeks later. We followed the 12 series protocol with additional focus on her ankle to assist with her rehabilitation. In addition to the before and after photographs, I used a variety of measurement tools, such as the weight-bearing lunge test, the lower extremity functional scale, quality of life and pain scales, along with measuring the edema in her legs. These are useful measures, both to help validate structural integration as a manual therapy, but also track progress with the client. The client reported improvements in most areas with a reduction or a change in pain and she was able to return to play hockey and run towards the end of the series. What I learned from this case is that structural integration can be a powerful intervention in addressing scar tissue and adhesions to increasing function and mobility through the whole body not just where the injury is. It also provides the client a sense of their body, increasing their awareness and helping restore balance and function. So there is this obsessive quality also in the brain that they, this pain has been there for five years or six years or whatever. And if you can shift in their system that self-perception, then you've done a lot and you can really hope that that through that global reorganization the, the person's organism will be able to address the problem much better than they try to fix it. Now, I have nothing against fix-it work. There are excellent people out there who can, in physiotherapy and other modalities, when you come with a problem and they do two or three sessions and they improve the situation greatly and they're really good at that masters at that. We are not in our community of schools. We are more there for the, let's say, for the chronic situation, if you will. But we're also there, for me, a 10 series is I take the person on an adventure. This is how I always look when I start. I take them through a tour of their body in 10 sessions where they actually learn the interconnectedness of things. So whether a structural integration practitioner is doing project work or series work in a 10 or 12 session, those who undergo the process of structural integration 
usually find themselves better balanced, moving through their day with greater ease and having a sensation of the often chronic aches and pains that brought them to structural integration in the first place. I'm David Lasondak. Thank you for your time today.